Hi guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. I wanted to let you in on how I would revise my DIY system if I remade it today. So let's take a look at what I have and then we'll go over what I would change if I was to do it again today. I have my red wigglers in this system and it is three 10 gallon totes. You don't really get to use all 10 gallons of it simply because of the compression. So let's take a look at what we have here. I did put some dry bedding on the top to try and keep the um, gnats out. Looks like it seems to have worked in this bin. So I think we're gonna keep going with that idea. Okay, so we fed three weeks ago, but we fed in the middle. But I do wanna take a look in on this part and look and see how the worms are doing. I think there was some uh, really long-term food in here, like, oh, this is the, uh, Oh, cool. This is the Theobroma, the, the cocoa pod, and you can see springtails in there with the little baby worms. With my eyes, I can't really see anything except for the springtails, but I'm willing to bet there's probably mites in there helping the worms break down this really tough pod. We'll put them back together. Okay, so what first thing that we're going to talk about is the overall construction of the bin. So when I made this, I took and put screens all along the side with a half inch hole and then I hot glued the screen onto that little hole so that I could prevent bugs and stuff from getting in. This is completely not necessary because now I actually don't put the lid on at all and the worms are just fine. So one of the things that I'm suggesting is just to make it more simple. And uh, I think there's a saying about that, keep it simple. And then, yeah, so let's look around here. It is looking a bit dry, so it might be time to put that lid back on. A lot of times you get a bit of a buffer when you put really dry stuff on the top, then the moisture does not actually evaporate as much, but the bin does look like it's had quite a bit of uh, moisture removed. So this is actually a rubber tree plant leaf and I know, I can't remember who was talking about live oak leaves. Um, maybe it was Peggy, I think it was Peggy. And she was talking about how long does it take? Well, this has been in here for a couple of months and a rubber tree plant leaf is pretty dang tough. And here's one that is still in process and you can see where they've, and I doubt it's the worms that's doing this. It is very much likely the um, shredder bugs that are in here that are doing this. And then the worms just eat up all the, the goodness that they can fit in their tiny little mouths. All right, so we're just seeing more and more of that coconut husk, which they seem to be really making fast work of. Oh, there's my springy little springtails. Excellent, good job. Okay, so I think it needs some more moisture up here. And so let's cover that back up and then we will look at the next layer down. Okay, here's the next layer down, and I think this is where we fed. So let's look and see what we've got growing in here. Oh, looks like that uh, that cabbage is actually sprouting here. <laughs> That's kind of cool. And I understand that you can actually grow another cabbage from that. Ooh, ooh, we haven't had a good worm ball in here for a while. Look at that, good worms. So worm ball under the cabbage. Look at how cute and wiggly they are. Being cute for the camera, can't ask for more than that. Okay, so they are really getting into that cabbage. Ooh, and then I just messed up my obligatory avocado shell worm ball. All right, so that was cool. And then here are my risers. So what I wanted to talk about second in regards to what I would change I would make all the holes in the bottom the same. The holes in here are about a sixteenth of an inch because I thought that I needed a sump for liquid. I wouldn't do that this time. If I was going to do it over again, I'd make all the holes a quarter inch. Really good size for the little tiny worms to come and go as they please. I think it's uh, probably just a pipe dream if you think the worms are going to go by whatever system that you think they are going to do. Ooh, I think I feel something more squishy over here. Another part of a worm ball. Awesome. Oh yeah, check that. Oh, holy cow. 
Look at that. That is a good day. Oh, you've made your mommy so happy, little worms. I haven't seen a good worm ball in such a long time. Look at those cute little yellow tails. Good worms. So that's two whole worm balls in this center part. And the, whoop, and I just messed up another one. So they are really in a feeding, a feeding frenzy. A lot of people are like, does not mean they're unhappy if they ball up. It could mean that they're unhappy in the event that there's something wrong with the bin, but this bin smells nice and clean, just like a forest floor. So there's nothing in here, it's not too wet. So these worms are happy worms, and they are all balling together in a feeding frenzy over that cabbage. I'm gonna take these out. The third thing that I would definitely do if I was remaking this bin is uh, I wouldn't count on having a lid and then I also would make these risers part of the original group. And this is just a uh, water pipe or wider, oh dear God. This is just a water supply line that you can get at Menards or Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that. And uh, I think six feet of it was only a dollar and a half even in today's economy. So let's get this all churned up, make sure there's nothing getting foul. So they've got this cabbage and that's all they've got left to eat. So this is, I've made a good decision to come in here today because they are definitely going to need some more food. Let's look at the bottom bin. Okay, and again, the risers are doing a great job keeping this from compressing. And, uh, and I think it was Michael from on the rocks and in the soil, I think. I don't think he really has a channel yet. Uh, we wish he would because he's got a wealth of information, especially on African night crawlers. But uh, yeah, so the risers were a great idea. And you don't probably have to use the, um, the water pipe like I did. You could probably use just little caps, you know, like a tall cap, like a peanut butter cap would be about the same size or maybe even um, those little pudding dishes that you get uh, at a big box star store that are about that big and that deep. I think those would probably do the same that you could put in here to keep it from compressing. But I think, yeah, the compressing is, getting rid of the compression has definitely helped. I think I see a larger population of worms down here since I've started doing that. So since we fed on the second level last time, I think we're gonna feed down here. So we're just gonna kinda hollow out a part here, give them some fresh bedding, and let's get them some food. Okay, now I make this bedding special just for the red wigglers because I do put worm castings in here so that it can get started uh, on its way of degrading before I feed it to the worms. So if you want to look and see what my recipe for worm bedding is, I will link that video right up there. But for the uh, Cliff Notes version, it's shredded paper and cardboard, coconut coir. That keeps the paper from sticking together. You can see all this on my hands. That's actually eggshell grit. And then I also put in, for about a five gallon bucket of bedding that I'm making, I usually add about a quarter cup of liquid seaweed or kelp meal or something like that for a source of nitrogen to get the microbes up and running. And if you really have time, you can also put a source of sugar like molasses in there to feed the microbes to get them really breaking the stuff down ahead of time. I don't drink coffee anymore, but if you had coffee, that would be another source of nitrogen. All right, let's go find them some food. This is some pretty slow food. We've got the bottom of a pineapple, We've got some lemons that started molding. I tell you, once you get one moldy lemon in a bag, they just all just jump off the cliff with them. There's a mango pit. They'll be working on that for a good long time. We'll see if this sticker is one of those ones. I think this was an organic mango, so possibly it might be one of the kind that will degrade on its own, but we'll see in a couple of months when all of that food is gone. Let me get them a little bit more bedding. Okay, I'm gonna put their little risers back in here in the corner. And we'll start reassembling. I'm gonna give them a little food on that second level as well. Uh, we'll put it off one side uh, because they really did plow through all that food. I think I underestimated their need for food. Temperature in the basement is 21 degrees Fahrenheit. 
47% humidity. I think that's a bit low. I think it's more humid in here. But we'll have a look uh, once we put it back together. For those people that do have a stack system, you're probably wondering what about the worms that are dangling out the holes? I have a mortar tray behind me that when I unstack the system that the worms actually go into the mortar tray. Uh, and then I pick them out and put them in the top later. That way I don't lose anybody because they are dangling from the bottom just like spaghetti. And if I had another hand, then I could show that to you, but only got these two. All right, let's get this level a little bit of food. We'll put that in the corner over here. Now that is rice and a banana. And rice is one of those things where if you don't mix it up with some bedding or something that's nice and wet, it could mold and then turn into a rock. So if you do feed rice, you need to make sure to, that it's very wet and that it's mixed into something that is wet so that it can get broken down. Other than that, you'll see some pretty blue mold and the worms will love it. And as you can tell, I'm giving them some super sloppy wet bedding. I'm gonna kind of massage that in just a little bit so that uh, it doesn't clump together and turn into a rock. And that's not gonna be a problem because this is actually the middle layer, so there's gonna be another layer on top that these worms uh, can get to should this heat up, and it might. Um, lots of nutrients for all of the microbes in rice. So um, they do have ample places to get away if they need to. And here we are back assembled again. And even though this is super dry, I'm gonna leave it because I put so much wet things on the underneath side, but I am going to put some bubble wrap on top of here so that the moisture doesn't escape anymore and hopefully the gnats won't invade. If you like the Red Wiggler or the DIY bin, I have a playlist that you can watch right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.